Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this last lesson on momentum and impulse. In this lesson, we're going to be looking specifically at impulse. Before we do anything else, let's look at the definition of impulse. Impulse is defined as a product of the force applied and the contact time of the force. So basically, you can, we can write that the impulse of a force is equal to F res, which is the resultant force that is applied, multiplied by the time that that force is in contact with it. Okay, so therefore, F res, times change in time, is called the impulse of a force. Do you notice the smoke coming from the gun? This is because there is an explosion inside the gun, which propels the projectile out of the gun. This explosion is an external force on the projectile, which acts over a specific time period. This force acting over this specific time is known as impulse. Now let's look at how Newton's second law and impulse are related to each other. We know that impulse is F res times delta T, right? Where that's the resultant force times by the amount of time that the force is applied. But we know that the resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration, which means we can substitute mass times acceleration into this equation here. So we've got A is equal to Vf minus Vi over delta T, right? And we know that m is mass, so therefore we've got that f results in delta t is equal to, basically we, what we've done is we've said ma times delta t, and then inserted this here, 4a, so you've got m vf minus vi over delta t times delta t. So obviously we can see that those delta t's cancel, and we get that the M is F res times delta T equals MVF minus VI, but that there is just the change in momentum because that can be rewritten as MVF minus MVI. And you guys know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So that is just P final minus P initial, which is basically delta P, right? Therefore, we can say that F res delta T is equal to delta P. So if they ask you ever to state Newton's second law in terms of momentum, or if they say prove the equation with respect to Newton's second law, that impulse equals change momentum, this is how you would do it. So please make sure you understand the steps. And we're going to be using this equation here to solve for lots of problems. So F res times by delta T is equal to delta P is very important, but it is on your formula sheet, so you don't have to panic about that. A tennis ball of mass 60 grams strikes a wall perpendicularly at 40 meters per second and bounces back. The magnitude of its change in momentum is 4.2 kilogram meters per second. A what is the magnitude of the impulse exerted by the wall on the ball? Here is the information we have. We need to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted by the wall on the ball. Remember, impulse equals change in momentum, and change in momentum is given as 4,2 kilogram meters per second. Therefore, impulse equals 4,2 kilogram meters per second. B. The wall and the ball are in contact for approximately 0 0.05 seconds. What is the magnitude of the average force exerted on the ball? Remember direction towards the wall is positive and away from the wall is negative. The formula states that the resultant force times change in time equals the change in momentum. Time equals 0 0.05 seconds and change in momentum is 4.2 kilograms meter per second. So resultant force times 0 0.05 seconds equals 4,2. If we manipulate the formula, we see resultant force equals 4,2 divided by 0 0.05, which means resultant force equals 84 newtons towards the wall. We can apply the concept of impulse to safety considerations in everyday life, for example, airbags and seatbelts. 
The purpose of an airbag is to help the passenger in the car reduce their speed in a collision without getting injured. When a car stops abruptly, if a person is not secured in the car, they move in the same forward direction with the same previous speed as the car until a force acts on them. In some situations, the passenger hits into the dashboard or windshield. This force acts for a very short time, so the force is large and the passenger is injured. An airbag provides a force over a long time. So even though the change in momentum is the same, when the force that slows down the passenger acts over a longer time, there is less injury because the force is less. Good reason to have a car with airbags. 